wonderful to be here, and uh, we call these our kids. They come to our camp meetings, and we appreciate the congregation that you sent them. They just come out, they come back better, you'd probably agree, but we, uh, we love them very dearly, and uh, they're hungry for the things of God, and you can be safe with them. Thank you for your enthusiasm, but you can. If, if you don't go to church here, you just close your ears. But anyway, we have some material back there that we brought, and we sure would like for you to get it. It'll bless you. Uh, this is what we call our classic collection. It's volume three, and, uh, and it's called uh, Every Believer's a Minister, John Osteen. Amen. And this material you can't get from the... Joe Osteen, which is his, his son, uh, they don't sell it anymore, but we had this in our archives. The other one is the Holy Ghost in the local church. Hallelujah. It's just really powerful and be a real blessing to you, and that's out there. And then my wife, we just sent her back today, uh, free from fear. Hallelujah. If you have any kind of fear, that this is powerful. This, this, this is powerful. Free from fear. <coughs> Hallelujah. How much is this, Mitch? Huh? $21? Wow. Praise God. I'll, uh, I'll, let, you, I'll let you have it for $11 tonight. Amen. That's her stuff because she tried to give all my stuff away last week. So now she, <laughs> she did. So anyway, so I, gave, I got one of her books and I put it on half price and uh, he took it away. Hallelujah. This is uh, about healing and how God gave me revelation knowledge out of the Word. When I found out that he took it away, then, what's, then what people, tradition say, uh, some say that God put it on you or allowed it to come on you to teach you something. But if he took it away, it'd be a miscarriage of justice for him to bring it back and put on you. But he took it away, and we know sickness and disease comes from the devil and then here's angels are yours working for you and that's a that that's a, a powerful series and it really really bless you there's four cds in here and um uh, and tonight we'll let you have this for 14 dollars i i'll take it back because there was no enthusiasm about that but anyway no. and then here's the spirit of faith there's a spirit of faith be a real real blessing for you and then uh, a book by my wife, I Have a Supply. Hallelujah. Now, uh, if, if, you, if you want to uh, learn about the supply that Jesus left you, everything that you need on this planet Earth is already here. Amen. You can pray to God. He's not going to rain it down to heaven. Everything is here. Uh, God put everything on here for his man, Adam. And Adam gave it up and gave it to the devil. He sinned and he gave it up. And then Jesus came back and took it all away from him and gave it back to you and me. Now, th th this, is, this is a powerful, powerful book. And it really bless you. So even tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell this to you for $5. And, and, uh, and then here's another one, Nancy, uh, by my wife, uh, ca uh, uh, Causes. Since we're redeemed from the curse of the law, how come does Christians fail? And that's, a, that's another powerful book. And that's $10, $5 tonight. Now, I never do. You can ask Mitch. I don't do this. But since my wife gave all my stuff away the last minute. <laughs> Amen. So you're benefiting from our little deal here. Uh, Golden Nuggets for Longevity. That's out there. And then Visitations from God is by Pastor Nancy. And since she gave all my stuff away, $5 tonight. So praise God. And then uh, our Bible school starts uh, up September. Uh, if you're interested in going to a Holy Ghost Bible school, uh, there's some material back there, and you can sit in there and be a, a real blessing. And then we have our newsletter. We call it the Healing Bread Herald of all kinds of testimonies uh, and how all the different creative miracles that happen. Uh, this is back there, and these are free. So they're free at half price. So, but anyway, then we have a whole bunch of other material back there. It'll be a real blessing. 
to you. Praise God. And we, and we, and we, and we want you to get a hold of it. Um, hallelujah. I'm so thrilled that you came out tonight. And, and on a Friday night, I know sometimes it's busy, but you, that means you're hungry for God. And there's going to be some people healed here today. Said so there's going to be some people healed. Praise God. So, uh, and we know that. Before I get into the Word, I have a Bible lesson that God laid on my heart uh, just a few minutes ago. <laughs> And, uh, but I, I don't know, I, I, and I'm a man, I can miss it, you know, I, 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 that's one thing I'll say, I'm a man, I can miss it, but I, I don't know if it has to do something, there was some crack ribs or something with the ribs, I don't know what that, what it is, is there somebody in here that has pain in that area, in, in your, in your rib area, right in here, uh, either side you have trouble in that area? Uh, that that came to me real strong on the way over here, praise God. Around around here in the rib area, rib cage area. We we had a man, huh? I was gonna say if they got it, come on forward. Amen. Oh, and she's bold. She'll tell you like it is. Praise God. <laughs> and uh, we we were in a church, Pastor Webb's church, many years ago, and there was a man uh, that got into my line, and he said, "I'm up here. I was born. I had a." deformity in this rib cage on this side didn't uh, form like the other side. Otherwise, this side was bigger than this side. And, 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 and so I laid my hands on it, and you could hear the bones popping, and it came out to normal. <laughs> but I don't know if it was an accident or something like that, that, that there was something right there in that area. Is that you, sir? Oh, you're just praising God. Amen. Amen, amen. What's it say on that hat? Oh, praise God. Thank you for your service, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I, 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 we we uh, saw somebody, was it, uh, I don't know if it was the day yesterday, that had a World War II, and those guys are hard to find anymore. My dad was in that war. And uh, that war was very important to America and we lost a lot, a lot of men give their lives. And we wish people today would appreciate it. Yeah. But I restored a World War II Jeeps. I got four World War II Jeeps. Wow. And, and a, a World War II weapons carrier. I'm looking for a tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, i put it up in my ranch in Colorado. And, anyway, praise the Lord. I behave myself, praise God. But if, if that relate to anybody, that relate to anybody. Don't come up after the service and say, well, that was me, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to come up. But anyway, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. It, it seems to me like it, that something, something hit it or something like that or, or, or something like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. And during the service, if, you, if that was you, just come on up. Praise God. Did you bring your Bible with you? Yeah. Let me see it. Put it up in there. Let me see it. You know, if you're ashamed to carry it with you, put it in a sack until you get over it. <laughs> but it's the Word of God that will set you free. I said it's the Word of God that will set you free. And anyway, you want to follow along with me and make sure I'm preaching out of the Word of God and not making something up. Are you listening to me? Now this is uh, this October will be my 47th year in ministry. I just I just turned 70 years old uh, last month. And 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 my 40 40 um, October will be my 47th year that I've been in the ministry. And I and what I'm going to minister for a little bit to you. Then we'll minister to the sick because I think that's what they advertise. There's there's a strong healing anointing in here. And I and so I want to be sensitive to that. But in the 47 and doing church work, pioneering several churches. I pioneered three churches. Uh, and, uh, and had Bible school. And I got to know sheep. I got to know people. And I found out that the best, the, 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 in, in the sheep, the, the lacking thing in sheep today, in Christians, 
is getting their mind renewed with the Word of God. Because they get their mind renewed and who they are in Christ, it'll change their life. I said it'll change their life. I said it'll change their life. Praise God. Well, Jesus said something about that. Go over to Matthew chapter 6, if you would. Uh, Jesus gave us some instructions what not to do. Yeah, amen. Amen. Uh, we, we were, uh, somebody uh, yesterday were in, in Jamestown and was going to a restaurant and we stopped at a red light and there was a police officer and he was writing a parking ticket. And it said no parking. And they parked there. Now they're probably going to get mad because they got a ticket, but it said no parking. And I'm thinking, uh, no means no. No means no. See, here, here's our handbook to success right here. What God said. This is the handbook to success. Not religion. Not what you think. But what the Word says. And the biggest killer, the biggest doubt and unbelief is worry. Worrying. My, my mother, she died when she was 45 years old. There was six of us children. She was, uh, in most of her life that I can remember, she was sick and in and out of mental institutions. And, and, uh, and before she died, I, I was saved. Two, two years later, I won her to the Lord. She got right with God before she died. She died of alcoholism and, and cirrhosis of the livers and, 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 and mental problems. So I know a little bit about mental problems. I remember uh, that uh, that uh, they they when my when my mom and dad when when my mother was 15, my dad was 16, and she was pregnant with me. Uh, this is 1940. World War II is about ready to break out, and my mom and dad were on their way to Tijuana, Mexico. They lived in Long Beach to abort me. But on the way there, God sent an angel out of heaven and going down. How, how do you know this? Well, I finally asked my dad about it, but God showed me. Yes. When I was in Munich, Germany in, 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 in 83, that uh, what happened. And I, I want to explain something to you, son. The, the Lord says, I want to show you why your mother was sick. And you've got to warn people about guarding their minds. And he took me out of my body from Germany and took me all the way to Long Beach, California in 1940. And I was sitting in the back of that seat. And my mom and dad, they're, they're on the way to Tijuana. And then an angel came in there and hit my dad. Now, my dad, he was a Catholic. He was an altar boy. He was a Catholic. He, was, he wasn't born again at that time, but he, but he was a Catholic. And, uh, and, he, and when that angel hit him, he didn't know an angel hit him, but he, the angel touched him. And he said, he leaned over to this 15-year-old young girl. I'm sitting in the back seat. God, you know, God can do that. He can take you out of your body and take you somewhere else. And I, don't try to figure that out. But he just did it. But I want to help you tonight. I want you to have longevity. And, and he showed me because I had, res I had resentment towards my mother because she was sick all the time, and I had to take care of the other five kids and change their diapers and everything else. So, you know, raising up as a child, you don't know. So you just take it out on somebody else, you know, in your home or, and so forth like that. Well, going back to 1940, they're going down the road. My dad said, Norma, I can't do this. I was raised Catholic, and this is wrong. Praise God for the Catholic. Praise God for their stand. I wish some Christians would take that same stand. A lot of them have backed off of that, but they, they, are you listening to me? And, and, uh, and they went to Tijuana and they got married. I was uh, months, well, last year, I, I was going through my dad's death certificate and everything, my mother's, and then I pulled out their marriage license. And everything was in Spanish except their name and the date. And I was, right, I was going around my bedroom, ha, 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 devil. You didn't do it. See, there was a call on my life. So they came back. 
They got married. They showed me the whole thing. He came back, and when he got back, when he got back, uh, I saw it. I saw it in the vision, and he pulled up to this house, and, and somebody in the family come running out and said, Daddy's dead. Daddy is dead. Well, that was my mother's dad. He committed suicide. He put a, he, in a Model A in the field, and he put a, he put a hose, and he put it into the Model A and killed himself over because his daughter was pregnant and wasn't married. Aww. Yeah. Well, it, mental problems ran in the family. But her dad, now listen, her dad uh, left a note to my mother. Dear Norma. And, and uh, the, the note went on, and the reason I killed myself because you was pregnant. Now, you take a 15-year-old girl pregnant, and that war on my mother. And he's showing me. See, one thought. Everybody say one thought. One thought. She meditated on that thought. See, both sides of the family were alcoholics and everything else. And they said they were never going to drink because they saw the damage in what drinking will do. Hello? You shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. That's why I don't believe Christians should drink. You don't need to drink. If you stay full of the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't need it. You stay, you stay drunk on the Holy Ghost. The reason, the reason a Christian has to drink is you're empty. And you want a little buzz. I'll get off of that. But anyway, praise God. I, I, saw, I see what alcoholic, it, and it's a demon. It can get a hold of you and destroy a home, destroy a family. But that, but that one thought, and after a while, my, my, my mom and dad, my mother started drinking socially. You know, well, I'll just take a little bit here. And before you know it, the full-blooded alcoholics. And well, it was the alcoholic that did it. No, it was one thought that she meditated on her mind and it got inside of her. The guilt. And, and often I'd go as a little kid, my mother would be in there crying. I'm so sorry, Daddy. I'm so sorry. And I didn't know what she was talking about until I got saved and I'm preaching over in Germany and God took me back and showed me the whole thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, then it, then it showed, it showed that that spirit, suicidal spirit that was on my granddad, she got onto my mother because when she became ill, she was always trying to kill herself. That's why we had to lock her up in a mental institution to keep her from killing herself. Well, that same anointing, when my mother died, she tried to get on me as fear, 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 fear to get up and preach, fear to... to Anyway, are you listening yeah. to me? Yeah. Everybody say one thought. One thought. So you got to guard your mind. Go over to Matthew chapter 6. I said you got to guard your mind. You got to keep your mind renewed. Worry will break your body down. You're, you're, you're not created to worry. You're created to trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worrying is going back 2,000 years ago and getting a... Uh, an extension ladder and going up and slapping Jesus in the face and say, well, you really didn't do it for me. See, and trust in God, trust in what the Word says. My mother would worry, she was a hypochondriac. Now, I'm not putting her down, I'm just telling a fact. I love my mother. She's, she before, Right before she died, the night before they found her dead, she gave her heart to the Lord, and so did my dad. My dad lived a lot longer, but anyway, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. But she, she worried about us all the time, worrying all the time. And, and, and she had a medical book, big old thick medical book. And she'd say, she, like one time she looked through here, my hair, oh, oh, little Eddie, you, you, oh, my goodness, it's flaking off. And she'd get her medical book out, and she found out that it was alopecia alzada. Do you know what that is? Does anybody know what that is? Any nurses? What is it? Stand up and tell us. Stand up. Come on. You're a good-looking lady. Yeah, it's like sort of like in the same area of a ringworm. Is that what happened to you? Did you have Alice? He pointed. <laughs> You're bald. Well, we we pray, we minister to people and their hair grow back. We we've got testimony of it. 
Amen. Amen. But what I'm bringing out, you see, she was always, and it broke her mind down. <laughs> worrying about it. See, worrying is not trusting. And I mean, she was always, if everything was going all right, oh, everything's going all right, must be something wrong. I mean, that's expecting something else to go wrong. And this is, this is what causes a lot of people to be sick. It opens yourself up to diseases. Because you're, not, you're made in the image of God, and you're not made to carry cares of this world. Well, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Is it bigger than God? If it's bigger than God, then you do have a problem. But there's nothing bigger than God. There ain't no big mountain. There ain't no big worry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, we could lay hands on you to get you healed. We know how to get people healed. It's just, but they'll go back and carry their cares. They won't cast their care over on the Lord, and they carry it around. Now, notice what it says here. You got your Bible there with you? Amen. Bring your Bible with you when you come to church. See, some people want a quick fix. They want the man of God to lay hands on and get healed, but they don't want to do their side. And God is a loving God, and he will heal you, but let's keep you healed. I said, let's keep you here. We're, we're only here for, for an hour tonight, but, uh, you know, it takes lesson after lesson. That's why you need to get into a good church that preaches the Word of God and moves in the Spirit. All right, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say unto you, red print, this is Jesus talking. Everybody say, this is Jesus talking. I say unto you, take what? No. Said no parking, and they parked her anyway. No means no. I said, Listen to me. No means no. This is not filler. I said, This is not filler. Look at me. This is not filler. Jesus ain't saying that to put filler. No means no. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. No means no. You ever been with parents, you know, you watch them and the toys for us? So now when we go in that store, don't you ask me for anything. No, you can't have it. And they go in the store and the baby sees it and it falls down on the floor having a fit. And they say, all right, all right, you can have it. See, that ain't teaching them what no is. I, I've been teaching our students in our Bible school, and I've been to, and, and teaching, mentoring uh, the, my son, spiritual sons and spiritual daughters, is to, if you can't uphold your own word, you won't trust God that he will uphold his. Everything on this planet Earth is upheld by his word. When God spoke to it. Well, when you learn, when you tell somebody I'm going to be there at 10, that doesn't mean 10-10. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a fanatic. I'm fanatically healed. I'm fanatically blessed. Hallelujah. If, if something happens where I can't make it, I'm going to get on the phone and tell them I'm going to be three minutes late. I did that the other day to Pastor Webb. I, 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 I was going to meet him at a restaurant, but I said, I'm held up in traffic. See, I was phoning. Why? Because I gave my word that I'd be there. See, when you learn to keep your own word, <coughs> if I tell somebody, I'm going to give you $1,000 for your ministry, or we're going to help somebody pay their mortgage or something, we keep my wife writes it down because we're going to uphold our own word. And Christians are the biggest shuck and jivers there is. Yeah, join the church. We'll, we'll be there, Pastor. Uh, we'll be there, yeah, 10, 15, 10, 30. It's got quiet in this Presbyterian church. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Praise God forevermore. When you start doing that, then you'll believe what he said. If he said no, that means zero. Take no, no thought. 
See, this is where you got to renew your mind. This is where the devil whips people. Right here, right here, right here, right here in your mind. Casting down all imaginations. Thought comes and it ain't lying with the word. This is what I say. That ain't my thought, Mr. Devil. Where are you going to get the money to add on to your building? Where are you? I said, that ain't my thought. I have a supply. I have spoke to my supply to give to me. And we teach you in the, that book. Uh, I have a supply. How to get your supply. Listen up. Praise God. Everybody say no means no. I mean, there's, got, there's people that get married and they, and they make commitments, but they don't keep them. Shucking jimers. Jesus, I love you. I'll do anything you ask me. I'll do anything. We'll give Sister Bucket Mouth $50. I love you, Lord. Well, pay your, if you love me, pay your tithes. See, you want God to keep his side, but you don't keep your side. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Lock the door. Don't let anybody out. I don't know what they were expecting tonight. but uh, Take no thought. Take no thought. Anything that is against the word of God, you're to talk to it. Now, you can't outthink thoughts. I've done it. I mean, I've done, I try to figure out how God's going to do it. I figure out, I'll figure it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Your mind going all the time. I, I won't, I won't, if I do this, I say all that. No, you got to cast that care over the Lord. You go as far as you can, but then cast it over the Lord. And a lot of people give it to God, and, they, and two days later, they take it back because they pick it up in their mind. Now remember, one thought drove my mother in the mental institution. Is you got to tell them, you got to guard your mind. But if you're not a person of the Word, and you don't study the Word, you don't know what the Word says. And you'll get beat up. Praise God. I, I had through the years. When I reached 40, when I, right, I was 44 and I was heading for 45, and the devil said, I killed your mother and I'm going to kill you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Put her in the front row here. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Amen. What do you do with that thought? How do you answer? See, yeah. see you got to answer it. You got to answer thoughts. Yeah. You can't outthink thoughts. You can't try to figure it. You answer it. With long life, he'll satisfy me, Mr. Devil. Well, he lied. In any way, if he could kill you, he would already did it. He can't kill you unless you give him permission. He, he can't take all your money away from you unless you let him. You got authority over the devil. So you got to know what no means. You got to, whatever he says, that's what you got to believe. But see, if you're not a person of your own word and, and you don't uphold your own word. With my kids, if I tell them I'm going to buy them a truck, I'm going to uphold my word. I'm going to be a person of my word. Are you listening to it? That's why people don't take face value in what he said. He said, by your stripes, you were healed. Yeah, yeah but I, I had the preacher pray for me, but I still feel it. No, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. So you got to say, I'm recovering. I'm recovering. Yeah. yeah, but feel. Nope. Feel. That, you know, you, you, still, you still got the hurt there. That ain't, that's none of my business. I said, I'm healed. I had hands laid on me. That anointing went in me and it's driving out sickness and disease. Hey! I don't know if I'm helping you, but I'm preaching myself happy. Come here and preach in this nice church and have main lots for a boy. That's, that's the cream of the crop. Glory be to God. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, or yet for your body. This is talking about material things. Yes. What you shall put on is not uh, uh, the life more than meat and the body more than clothes. Behold the fowls of the air. What's behold mean? Look at. Look at. 
Listen to me now. What's behold me? What is it? Look and observe. You're trying to get your attention. Behold. The birds. Now, look at Jesus. God himself in the flesh says, look at the birds. Well, we need to listen. What's he talking about? Look at the birds. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Everybody say, I'm better than a bird. No, I, the Lord. The Lord said, for years I've read over that. Yeah, that's nice. Look at the birdies. No, there's a reason there. He talks about don't don't take no thought. Then he said, now instead of taking the thoughts, look at the birds. Now, the Lord said something to me. You've been all over the world. Well, not all all over the world, but like next month we're going to London. We're going to Estonia. We're going to Russia. But all different places. But everybody, and the uh, first year I was up in Alaska, everywhere I go there are birds. There's not giraffes everywhere. Have you seen a giraffe walk by here? How about a gorilla? Anybody see an elephant go by? Do you have birds around here? Now think about that. I have, when I had fine, heavy you know, like you need a new engine on our jet, you know, a half a million dollars or something. Yeah. And, and, I, and that starts trying to get on me. It weighs on me. It weighs. People, I've had people say, Brother Ed, would you pray for me never to have another bad thought? I said, well, I can pray for you to die. That's the only way you'll never have a bad thought. Yeah. 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 You want me to pray for you to drop dead? Oh, no, 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 no. As long as you're on this planet Earth, but God showed us how to handle it. I know what wrong thinking will do with a person's life. I can know wrong thinking can do in a marriage. Wrong thinking can do in a church, and wrong thinking in a ministry, and what it'll do. He said. And don't meditate on the, what we do, how we're going to make it, where we're going to get the money. He said, meditate, look at the birds. Take your attention off of that and look at the birds. And I've done that. I don't know how many times. There's stuff, stuff tries to get on you. Money you need or building or whatever it is. And I'll just go sit in the backyard. We got these beautiful golden hawks that come in there, all kinds of birds. And I just sit there. That's just a reminder that God takes care of those birds and I'm better than a bird. Think on these things. I mean, they don't even pay their tithes. You don't even know if they have a green card. You don't know if they came down from Canada or came up from Mexico. (laughs) Hallelujah. They don't gather by. Yet the Father takes care of them. How much more? I don't know about you. I like living in more. In your background, they, they didn't teach too much about the preacher having more, did they? No, they they said, Lord, uh, you keep them humble and we'll keep them poor. We'll hardly give them anything. Just give them an old beat up house and got six kids. That ain't more. I said, that ain't more. Hallelujah. I like living in the more. I like paying my bills. I, I like being able to help other people financially. Me and my wife, the first of last year, we made up my mind, we're going to help more families than we ever have before. And we're always looking where we can plant a seed and help somebody. Why? Because I live in the more. I ain't going to live in lack. I'm not going to be in the ministry and be poor all the time. My kids raise up and get turned off to the ministry. Well, that's the way people live. Forget it. I've done my best to keep my kids in the more, and they love the ministry because they want what daddy's got. Well, they already claim it. Stephen says he owns all those Jeeps and everything, and they're in my name. But I said something to him sitting when he was a little boy. He was sitting on the front row, 
And he heard me say, now, Stephen, everything is mine is yours, just like the Father said is that do it. And that was it. He has never let me down on that one. <laughs> Smart kid. <laughs> I don't know if I'm helping you, but I'm preaching myself happy. You're all pretty hungry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you not much better than they? And they answered, And which of you taken thought can add one cubit unto his statue? Why take ye thought for uh, clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow and, and toil not. I mean, just look out and look at the grass. Hallelujah. In other words, get your thought process on the, the one that loves you and the one that will take care of you. And in that book, I have a supply which is at half price. I'm giving, she ain't with me, so I'm giving all her stuff away because she gave all mine the last meeting. <laughs> don't you phone her and tell her now, sister. Don't you do that. So, uh, hallelujah. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which tomorrow is, and tomorrow's uh, uh, into the oven, yeah. shall he not much clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no, there's no again, no parking, no means no. See, that, that's what, my, Grant phones me up once in a while, he says, Dad, can you get Mom off of my neck, man? She took, she took my car away from me, she took my, my, my uh, you know, they, all this computer toy stuff, I don't even know how to turn them on. But, you know, some of you right now probably got Bibles inside your stuff, you know, and all this, all this electronic stuff. She took it away. I said, well, how long you took it away? She said, 90 days. I said, buddy, I, you're going to get married and leave this house. I got to live with her. <laughs> and I got a covenant with her that we would stand behind each other. So don't come to me and try to get Teddy Bear Daddy to give in. No means no. She told you not to get into that stuff. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he said not for you to worry. So if you're going to disobey God, or you, you go to a church where they don't teach you how, well, get into a place where you can learn. That's right. Do, do we have that book out there, Mitch, uh, The Strong Mind? Uh, we don't have any? Oh, we sold out the other place about renewing your mind with the Word of God. And uh, anyway, praise God. That's why we wrote that, or my wife wrote it, for we could help people. See, here's your battlefield right here. You get your mind renewed with the Word of God. Not with religion, not what people say, but what God says. Or a doubting, unbelieving preacher. Hallelujah. See, I, I would say, I, when I got saved, they believed in being born again. But I, I got saved, got in a denominational church. And, and I had a problem ever believing it. They just said that God allows sickness or puts sickness on to teach you for you to be a better Christian. Well, when, well, that's a lie. What you do is you'll hesitate when sickness, you don't know who's doing it. God and the devil are not working together. I said God. And the devil are not working together. Now, in the middle of that, God will come in and talk to you, but he didn't do it. He's not the troublemaker. He's your Savior. He loves you. He cares about you. He, he cares about every area of your life. And see, here's another thing. People have a, a, a mindset of God up there with a baseball bat. You go to a funeral, you, a, a mother 45 years old like I, my mother did, and the kids are sitting in the front row, and the preacher gives them, God give it, and God take away. Well, God never, those kids are saying, well, if he took my mother, forget him. <laughs> I've seen it time and time and time again. If God took you, are you, are you like Elijah? Who was the other dude? Enoch. Enoch. Yeah. There's only two. Yeah, it's only two. There's only two that you can't find their body. And the reason that, but they still got to die because they're coming back. And where are they going to die? Where are they going to get their heads cut off and where? 
and Jerusalem. And it says the whole world will see it. Fox News will be there. CNN will be there. All of them will be there. And they're going to cut those heads off and they're going to see them come right back on and stand up. Because it ain't fair for me have to, that, that if the Lord tarries, I have to die and be put in a, a coffin. And they didn't. So they got to come down here, back down here. That's the only way he'll take you. Live your life out. With long life. See, I'm, the Lord tell you, I'm going to 90. Why? Because I can have what I say. Remember, it says, take the thought. Now, notice this. Don't take the thought and say. What was the thought come for for you to say? Because the devil knows you can have what you say. And some of you need to get off of your case. That's right. You're too hard on yourself when the Father loves you. Quit talking about your inability. Well, I made so many mistakes. Join the club. (laughs) We've all made mistakes, but see, I I tell I tell people, well, did you hear what that preacher did? Did you hear what that person did? I said it doesn't matter, but I said I'm going to show mercy on the mercy side instead of the judgment side. Too many people today are they want to stay on the judgment side. Where's the spirit of Jesus? You getting, you getting some help here? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, take no thought, what? Saying. Now, what did he say not to do? Now, what, in that scripture there, wherefore, uh, there take no thought, saying. Saying what? Now say, look at it. Let, let's read it. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What did he say? Not to say that. No, we don't get the money. I'm on Social Security. And uh, believe me, boy, I, I don't know how people make it on what they give you. Now they're trying to take that away from you. You better than believe God. I, I get Social Security, and uh, you know when I'm 65, and I waited late more months later for I anyway went on, and I get it, and it's just seed money. You, I couldn't live on that. I couldn't support a family on it. You wonder why people have to move to Arizona and live in a little trailer park and eat dog food. That's tragic. That can I take a little side run? It is tragic the way America government take care of our elderly people when they give billions to people to blow us up. Are you mad about it? Yes, I'm mad about it. And people that went over there. I was in Jamestown. I kept going by the graveyard because it was on the way to the church. I said, there's a, there's a, at night, there, there's a grave that is all lit up and has a gun and with a helmet. And he said, yeah, that's, uh, I've talked to that man and this was a father. His son got killed in Afghanistan. And I said, that man went over there for a, po- a political war. And some of them, they're, they're taught to fight, and they can't shoot, even shoot first. I said, what kind of war is that? Praise, praise God. The last war we won, really, was World War II. The rest of them have all been in. Anyway, I'll get off of that. I, that's a little side deal. I need to get off of that. I might offend somebody, but it's too bad. But it bothered me. That boy was 20 years old. He said his daddy goes down there and cries every day around that grave. Got it lit up at night. Got the helmet up and everything else. I don't know if that, that bothers me. I said that bothers me. The pastor said I've talked to him several, several times. The man is just so grief stricken. God loves you. He wants you healed. He wants you blessed. But if you're talking wrong, he can't help you as much as he loves you. He cannot help you. Don't say, well, we're going to get the money. How are we going to make it? How are we going to pay it? Don't say that. What do you want me to say then, Brother Ed? How do people get back? What do you want me to say? I just say I have a supply. See, Adam, when he put him on the earth, Adam, and, and, and then he gave him a supply. Then, if you read in the book of beginnings, he let Adam name everything. 
He put a name, words, words, you see. What did, his name was above every name on this earth, Adam's name was. He turned it over to Satan. And his own angel had to drive out Adam. Adam's angel drove him out. And Jesus came. And he went to hell for you and me. And what did he do? He went over to Satan. He said, give it back to me. Give, give, give me that authority you t that Adam gave you. And he took it away from him. And he stepped back. Wham! Put a big old bruise on his head, which the father said he would do. He said, I'm going to get you for messing with my family. I'm going to get you for messing with my family. And he found a man by the name of Abraham that he, that he could get the seed through. Because Abraham, he, he tithed in all his increase. See, God can trust a man and a woman that tithe. That's right. You don't tithe, he can't trust you because you're stingy. Yeah, that's right. That's true. You got quiet. You know, I found out in out all these years how to get a holy hush. Talk about their money, talk about their kids, talk about being overweight. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll get a holy hush every time. Yeah. Then what did it say? Now... Jesus' name is above every name. Amen. And every name that Adam gave in that garden for all your supply, everything has a name. That light has a name. That tile has a name. That light has a name. You have a name. Even if they called you nothing, it's still a name. That's right. When I was a kid, they called me stupid. That was a name. I don't want to walk with that name. And then Jesus came, yes, Jesus. and he sat there, he took it away from sin, and then he said, here, here's my keys, whatever you bind on this or bound in heaven. Thank you. Calling those things is, calling those things. See, the calling's on you, but here you're saying, how are we going to make it? You're calling in doubt and unbelief. You're calling, you're not going to get anything with that. Amen. And he said not to say that. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Glory be to Glory God. When you get revelation of that, it's taken me years to learn this stuff and sharing it with this generation. Hallelujah. I have a supply. The Bible says, ask me anything in my name and my father will do it. Ask anything. So I ask him for my budget. I ask him what me and my wife need for a year. I ask then I believe I receive, and I say, devil, get your hands off of my stuff. Now, who's got your stuff? Well, he took it away from Adam. He's got your stuff. So you got to say, devil, get your hands off of my stuff. I loose my ministering angels to go and cause the money to come that I need every month. Brother Ed. I had a lady come, Brother Ed, you don't understand. I'm on a fixed income. I said, well, who fixed it? <laughs> if the government said this is all they're going to give, is that the fixing? That's what you're going to buy? Or are you going to buy that my father, and he wants me to have more? Well, how's he going to get it? He said, not to say that. Shut up. He has ways of getting it to you. Well, you're a preacher. That's why it works for you. No. I know a lot of preachers that didn't work. <laughs> didn't, didn't preach her, in her denomination, did it? No. Starved them out. Turned some of the kids against ministry because the way they, they barely make it financially. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of them were really dedicated people to put up with that junk, yeah. the way people treat them. That's right, huh? I'm te I'm, I, I have a fresh oil fellowship. I have... I have hundreds of ministers, and, and, and I teach them to live in the more. Live in the more. Yeah. And I teach them how to teach their congregations for everybody to live in more. Live in more. And when, when you take care of your pastors, you live in more. That's right. I find difference in churches. Ones that take care of their pastors, they live in the more. They live in the more. Praise God. Because they put a value and an honor. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm preaching Praise real good. 
I don't know where you're from. I know not everybody goes to this church, but I don't know where you are. But put your hand up and shout anyway. Praise the Lord. God loves you. Did you, did, did you know in every cell of your body has a name? Cell is a name, and it has to bow to the name of Jesus. Anything with heart condition. I, t- I tell my body, you get in line with the word of God. You're going to last me until, until the Lord comes, or I've reached 90, and then I'll talk it over with the Lord if, if I, if I want to go or not. That's right. That's right. But long life, he'll satisfy it. What does that mean? Until you get satisfied. But I'm not satisfied right now. I'm married to a young woman. And I'm jealous. I'm going to live real old until she gets ugly and old. And then, <laughs> then I'll leave. Nobody will want anyway. That's selfish. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, did you get something out of this tonight? Don't take the thought. Then, then look at here. Look, look, look at here. Let's go on down here. And he said, now, uh, don't take the thought saying where we're going to make it, how we're going to get the money. He said, don't say that. Uh, for after all these things, this is the way the Gentiles or the world system work. Now look at this. But seek ye first the kingdom. You know, some people ooh, the kingdom. He's talking about the way that God does things. How does he do things? The world system's got their say, and their system's all screwed up. I mean, you can't even, you can't even get the Democrats and the Republicans to get together and save America. I'll tell you what's saving America is God. There's a bunch of those dudes are on their way out. Look at this. Now, don't get me. I want to be the Democrat. I want to, no, I'm a Christian. I believe for people to get in there and do the will of God in America. Now look at this. But seek ye first the way that God does things and his righteousness. One translation is doing right or being right. And one day I saw that. But seek ye first the way God does things and be right about it. You're not right about it if your words ain't right. You ain't right if you're worrying about it because you're not trusting God. Well, you've done it for so many years, it's a bad habit. Worry is a bad, bad, bad habit. Just like not resting is a bad, bad, bad habit. Are you listening to me? You know, I was getting a physical checkup one time, and I was sitting in the doctor's office and checked my heart because I have insurance on all kinds of things, our buildings and everything, so i got to go in for a checkup. And to, and, and to listen to people talk. Well, how many stents did you get this year? I mean, you just listen to the way they talk. I have to get out of there until they, I said, I'll be out, I'll be out in the hall. You get me out there. I can't. I mean, that sickness and they talk and everything. They're almost proud of their gizzard got taken out or something. I mean, the way they talk. Amen. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching real good. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Remember, you came here. Right. You stuck your toes out there. Oh, yeah. Want to help you. Yeah. Want to help you. God wants to help you. Yeah. So the way he does things, one, is not worrying and talk right. Talk according to the word. Well, I don't know the word. Well, there's a problem there. Get in the word. Get, get, get into a church where they teach you the word of God. Yeah, that's right. Not religion. Uh-huh. Are you listening to her, yeah. or some horse doggy show? And I said, oh, isn't that nice? That was such a nice play. Well, if it didn't have no word on it, it can't help you. You can't grow. Yeah. You want to get in a place where they teach you the word of God. Praise God. Don't shout me down. I mean, your shouts are knocking me up against the platform here. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now, notice this. How many? How many? Know that Jesus is not lying here. Look at this. But seek ye first for the way he does things, and be right about it, and all these things shall be added unto you. What's one and one? What's two and two? What's four and four? What's eight and eight? What's sixteen, sixteen? What's thirty-two, thirty-two? 
I'm sure glad you went to school. I like the addition to me. And be right. So you got to learn. I, I have a, I don't know if the series out there about, uh, uh, you got to be right to get your goods. We, we have that tape back there. and I'll put that half price too tonight. My office is going to scream at me, but I just, <laughs> since my wife gave all my stuff away, then, well, that's my. Amen. 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 You got to be right to have the blessings of God. That's right. That's right. You got to live right to have the blessings. God, yeah, God loves you, but if you, you got to <laughs> stand to your feet, I'm done. Did you get something out of that? Well, praise God. Well, there's a whole much, whole bunch more back there on that table that can help you. Amen. I said amen. Amen, amen. Start learning to quit shucking and jiving with your words and start having, it, it'll make you shut up for a while. Because we're loose, loose with our words, what we say. Now there's, you know, you can have fun and so forth like that. But start up hoping your word. When you tell somebody and you watch the change in your life, that you, you'll believe that God will uphold his word. He will. His word. He upholds his word. If he took his word back right now, we'd be stuck to that ceiling. No gravity or nothing. Everything. The moon and everything will go wild and everything. It's all upheld by his word. I just, just look at the stars and the moon. And God hung that just for me to look at. And he put it up with his word. He put that dude up there with his word. Fly in the middle of the night at 38,000 feet. Look out your window. Look at that moon. God upholds that with his word. And he upholds his word. Amen. And he says he loves you. He loves you. Hallelujah. Now, I want to, uh, uh, first I thought that was a spittoon. I didn't know anything, but I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, let's move that. You that, uh, God gave me a healing anointing in my right hand. And uh, since 1971, that anointing came into my hand. Just like it is right now, it's, it, it's warm and hot. That's the no healing anointing. You remember they did special miracles by the hands of Paul. And they took handkerchiefs from him. That anointing was tangible and it could be stored. And that anointing went in and drove out sickness. And it says sickness and disease departed. And if you need healing in your body, I want you to come up here. The ushers or whatever, how, how they work their system here. Come on up. Come on up. Amen. 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 Praise God. Come on up. Amen. Sorry if I take my coat off. Oh, In California, we got air conditioning now. Oh, <laughs> but it's so cold here all the time, most of the time. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's wrong with you, sir? I got more college in my knees. Uh huh. There it is, right there. Be healed. What's wrong with you, sister? Breast cancer. Piece of cake. Only believe. God loves you. He cares for you. I curse. In 1999, I went to heaven, and and God talked to me about this last day revival. When I left, a hand came on my head. He said, I'm giving you the ability or the power, if the people believe it, to lay hands and destroy, sick, uh, destroy cancer. Amen. So I curse it. Come out of her body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sister? Good to see you. Thank you for the syrup. We love it. What you need? I curse it. To go. Ooh, that's it right there. What you need? Your disc hurts? Uh-huh. Oh, there it is. There's. Uh-huh. The angels at work. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Is there, did they do surgery on it? No. Uh, I got my disc. I mean, it just rubbed 
Uh, that leg rags. Oh, there it is right there. There's the power of God right there going in you right there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. What a strong healing anointing in here tonight. What you need, Doc? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I command that heart to be normal. I command that blood pressure to be normal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of my, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Whew. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Good to see you, Don. Yeah, we see your sister once in a while. <laughs> Amen. She goes to my church. I just wonder anyway, what you need here. Uh, my sister-in-law uh, ate some bad sushi. Ate some bad cold, sushi? Cold, uh, cold. I'm going out there Sunday. So. Oh, are you? In the name of Jesus, Father, the anointing that you have anointed us with, go into this cloth and drive out sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Help her up. Your ushers, help this lady up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Do what? Amen. Amen. Come on with me. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go on. Walk down that way. Go on. Look at that. Look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's working. It's working in you. Huh? That's right. It's working in you. That's right. Praise God forevermore. What you need? A lady in our church, her mom had a massive stroke. Right massive now. stroke. Father, in the name of Jesus. No, oh, there it is. There it is. There it's going in you. Every bit, every bit of that sickness and disease go. What's wrong with you? I have neuro for a lonely person. Uh-huh. Don't sound right to me. In the name of Jesus, every bit of that go in Jesus' name. What you need, sister? Bone spurs and arthritis and pain in my left foot. Yeah. Oh, there it is right there. My goodness. What you need, sister? I need it to strengthen up. Uh, every bit of it go in Jesus' name. Ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, see it, see it. Got it, see it. I see it. I see it. What's up? Flat feet and I have a lot of pain in my feet. Oh, we have a lot of people get arches in our meeting. Oh, th there it is right there. Thank you, Jesus. What you need? I've been attacked a lot with stress. Stress? Because uh, you're carrying the care. Yeah, I know. That's so <laughs> go like this. Say, Lord, Lord I, give you this care. I give you this care. Go like that. Give it to him. So who has it now? He does. Okay. Every time it tries to come back, say, no. Yeah. no. Jesus has got it. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Every bit of that go. Yes, ma'am. Back pain. Back pain? Uh-huh. Have you ever had your, uh, your, your, your uh, spine x-rayed? You have a culvature of the spine? I see it. I got it in the spirit. It's crooked. And then it's going to make you taller. It's going to straighten. There it is right there in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, praise God. What you need? Stick with you. Huh? Stick with you. Uh, what is that? I have, I have numbness and oh. heads and needles oh, on my hands and feet. Oh, oh, there's anointing right there. Be healed. Wow. Watch it, watch it. I'm mentally disabled because, because of the service for not me in the hospital, and I've had mental illness since 1966, and I also have rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. I curse it. I command you to be healed, sir, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. What's up? Autoimmune diseases, and I react yeah. to, to foods and yeah. medicines and vitamins. Oh, and there it is, right there. There's a healing power right there. What you need, Doc? I got a huge anointing from Vietnam with back pain, and I get back arch. We just had open heart surgery. In your back? Did you say? No, open heart surgery. Oh, open heart surgery. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for serving. 
I'm awful sorry about that. But I care, and Jesus cares. Mm-hmm. Now we thank you, Father. And ask this man to be healed in Jesus' name. What you need, sir? What's that? What you need? I don't really know, to be honest. Uh-huh. You know, I really don't. And don't really are you, know. you, you, you touched your ear. What's wrong with your ear? Well, I'm probably hard of hearing. In the name of Jesus, I command these deaf spirits. In the name of Jesus, deaf spirit. That's right. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. What you need, sister? Mary. Now, what do you need? Macular dystrophy, my eyes, uh-huh. breast cancer. And breast cancer? And yeah. Spine. I curse every bit of it to come out of your body now. Not, not this woman. Be loose. The answer is yes. What you need? I have a DVT, deep vein. Uh-huh. My left leg. Yeah. And I have a road cut there. Oh, and, oh, there it is right there. There's a healing power going in you. Now, let, let's, everybody get attention on God now. There's too many distractions going on right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. What you need? Migraines and irritations around the, and inflammation around the small intestine. Yeah. And a bad migraine. I command you to be healed. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, yeah. What you need, Doc? Back, what'd you do? Oh, what'd you do to it? No, I heard it working. Huh? Did you fall over? No. Nope. Uh huh. Just okay. what? Lifting, lugging. Oh, there it is, right there. Amen. Shh, power of God, be healed. Be healed. Not back, every bit of it. Every bit of it gone in the name of Jesus. What you need, sister? I have cysts in my back. You have what? Cysts in my back. Cysts in your back? Mm-hmm. There it is right there in the name of Jesus. A bit go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. What you need? This is our healing for demons. Uh, on the anointing you've anointed us with, Father, go into this cloth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> every bit of it go in Jesus' name. Yeah, every bit of it go in the name of Jesus. What happened? Huh? We got scared. Oh, don't be scared. Amen. No, no, that's that's the Lord. I command the fear to go in the name of Jesus. I command the fear to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you have, honey, did you have pain tonight? Did you? Uh-huh. What's going on right now? Pain. Pain? Uh-huh. Every bit of it go in Jesus' name. Every bit of it go in Jesus' name. Jesus loves you. And he don't want you this way. I feel the power of God going through you. God's doing something. What you need, Mother? She's, she's totally deaf. Uh-huh. Uh, we need healing for her ears, and she's afraid, I guess. Afraid? She everybody fall and she oh, okay, fall yeah. Out. Yeah, when people ain't used to that, you know. Well, she is, but... She just don't know what's happening. She yeah. Knows. Okay. In the name of Jesus, she got an ear. Yeah. Yeah. Both of her ears are. Yeah. Take yeah. those out. Take that out. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Just out of her ear, for I can. Yeah. But God. Well, I'm telling you, the anointing of God is in this place. Receive it. Receive it. See, sometimes people don't realize what's going on and, 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 and uh, they get fearful. And you don't want to be fearful because God's moving and healing people. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That spirit command you to come out yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you for recreating that ear. Yeah. Out! Yeah. In Jesus' name. Praise yeah. Praise yeah. Praise be healed. Praise be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. What you need, Mother? Pat. I know. What do you need? Oh, I, I need a healing from smoking and cigarettes. And uh-huh. If I lay hands on you, are you going to smoke anymore? Hopefully not. Because there's no use me praying for you if you're going to keep smoking. 
No, there isn't. No. Yeah, you have to have effort in it yourself. That's right. They say, I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. My dad smoked three, four packs a day most of his life and carried an oxygen tank around him the last two years of his life. When they found him in the bedroom, he died from his lungs erupted and had blood coming out of his ears from smoking. See, I can lay hands on you all day long, but if you, if, if, if you don't do anything about it, you see what I'm talking about? I do. You, you got to work with God. He works with you. Right. Amen. 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 So say, Lord, I don't want this. Lord, I don't want I don't want to smoke anymore. I ask you to deliver me right now. I ask you to deliver me right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Be delivered. Be free. Be free. Command it to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. This line keeps growing. Glory be to God. <laughs> God, Father, the anointing you've anointed us with, go into this cloth. Drive out sickness and disease. Be, be blessed. Come over here, Mother. What you need? Um, the doctor's report. What the surgery on your foot. A surgery on your foot. Thank you, Father. Take all that away in Jesus' name. What you need, Mother? I got all kinds of needs. Okay. I'm on blood pressure medicine and cholesterol. And, uh-huh. And... Uh, for my memory. Yeah. yeah. So you need an overhaul. Yes, oh, I do. Well, God knows how to do that. In the name over. of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. What you need, Doc? Uh, my right shoulder is a rotor. Total restoration. My right shoulder strained it. No, oh, my, there's a power of God, sir. Boy, that's strong. Boy, there's a strong healing anointing in here tonight. What you need? I'm just going to find a bit of a and I also have arthritis and something. Yeah, every bit of it go in Jesus' name. What you need, honey? Uh, asthma. My oldest daughter got healed of asthma in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. You probably don't know who that is, but that's a long time ago. God, he, he takes away asthma. Be healed. In Jesus' name. What you need, Mother? I, I've had two heart attacks in the past year. Yeah. They can't do anything because my arteries are full. Yeah. And I have neuropathy in my legs. Yeah. That all right, in the name of Jesus, be healed. What you need? Uh, uh, I mean, what's wrong with you? Oh, what's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. I got a lot of things that trample on it. Yeah. Trampled and yeah. knees. Amen. I curse it. We're redeemed from the curse of the law, and every bit of that go in Jesus' name. Amen. What you need? I have vertebrae in my spine that keep coming out of socket. Out of oh. migraines. Oh, wait a minute. Just salt in the vision, you're healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. What, what you need? Every bit of it go in Jesus' name. Be healed, Mother, in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. What you need? I have spinal stenosis, arthritis, osteoporosis. Uh huh. The fire of God go right down your spine. Burn all that out in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What you need? I have um, high sugar levels, and I get migraines sometimes. I curse it to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What you need? My brother's been a quad since he was 16, a quadriplegic. He's 60 today. 60 and today. I asked him, and I told him I'd pray for him. All right, Father, thank you for this anointing. Go into this claw, and when they lay it on her brother, drive out sickness and disease and creative miracles. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What you need? Lord, maggot degeneration of the eyes. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. What you need, honey? Oh, every bit of it go in Jesus' name. All right. Man, the glory's in here. Let's just put our hands up and praise him. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. Thank you for your healing power. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. I need somebody down here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed, sister. Oh, that's it. Right there. Sister, be healed in Jesus. That's it right there. That's it. Went right in you. Oh, that's it. Went right in you. See, when I feel it go in you, I'll say, oh, that's it right there. Be healed. Right there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' That's it right there. Brother, be healed in Jesus' name. That's it right there. That's it. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I would like for everybody to stand up for a minute, if you would. I know this is a believer, 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 <laughs> believer's meeting, but you never know. You never know. If your heart was to stop right now, and, and you fell dead in that chair. I want you to raise your hand if you know that you're right with God and you would meet him. Put your hand up. You know without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, put your hand down. Now, if you would have died right there, you're not sure if you would meet God or go to heaven. How many of you of that? You're not sure, but you'd like to know tonight. Raise your hand. You're not sure, but you'd like to know. Raise your hand. I see. Praise God. Well, then every, everybody's born again. This, this is what we call a, a believer's meeting. That's wonderful, but you just never know. And that is my message, and may my fruit remain. And you're such a wonderful, wonderful group of people to preach to, and I have enjoyed myself tonight. You got something here, or are you just holding her? Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor, God bless you. I'm done. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Lord.